Hey, listen, the man that's on the line right now, he wants to be the governor. He's the Republican nominee to be the governor in the Commonwealth of Virginia, facing off against Terry McAuliffe. He is also currently Virginia's attorney general, the Commonwealth attorney general. He is Ken Cuccinelli, and we are very happy to have you on the line today. Hello, Mr. Attorney General. Good morning. How are you all? All right. Look, I, before we get into the campaign, i got to ask you about the other attorney general. The U.S. attorney general, Eric Holder, gave a big speech yesterday, said the, the war on drugs, it hasn't worked. Putting people in prison on drug charges is uh, very, very expensive. We need to lessen some of the, the uh, penalties for some of the drug offenses that are on the books right now. We need to use our prosecutorial discretion to not charge people with certain crimes and let uh, perhaps them go to treatment or other options. Uh, the Attorney General basically thinks that we need to be more lenient on people who are, who are arrested on drug charges. What do you think about that? Well, you know, it seems to me if you were going to exercise your prosecutorial discretion that way, you should have run on that. I mean, they have no mandate from the people of the United States to lay off on those drug laws. They don't have any mandate from Congress to do that. Um, I, I will say that this, one, this is at least legal, unlike what the president did last month, with Obamacare, where he just decided to wave his president wand and say, well, we're not going to enforce this part of the existing law anymore. And, I mean, you and I probably don't like that law, but nonetheless, you expect that to be enforced. But here, they're exercising legitimate prosecutorial discretion to, ch to implement a policy change. And um, it seems to me that if you're going to do something that substantial, you really should have brought it up in the campaign well, gee, why might they not have done that? <laughs> Perhaps they wouldn't have the support to do it. Well, and uh, and and I I think that it's kind of a backdoor way of doing this, and and I I think it's it's unfortunate. I don't think there's a problem having the discussion in the subject matter they're talking about. I think there's there's a worthwhile consideration of whether um, the policies we've had and going for a long time back, especially for low level drug offenders, have been effective. Um, and, or at least cost effective, but that's a that's a different matter than just yanking the policy um, and uh, and changing course with no discussion with the American people or with Congress at all. So you don't necessarily disagree about having the conversation. It's just the way he's going about it that you don't particularly like. I I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General, I, 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 we're watching this campaign. We're watching it on a daily basis, and I, I, it's amazing. Uh, your opponent, Mr. McAuliffe there for the Democrats, he's, is, he's gotten away with running a campaign without actually saying anything about what he wants to do with the Commonwealth of Virginia. I sat in on a press call. It, it, was, it was about 20 minutes long. He didn't take any questions from the press. The whole purpose of the call was to have the head of Planned Parenthood call you names. But to me, people in Virginia, they care about some things that the government can do for them or to get out of their lives with regard to uh, things like their schools, things like their jobs, things like transportation. My understanding is you are actually trying to talk about this stuff. You have a plan for the schools of Virginia. What is your plan? And if you could, why, why doesn't your opponent actually say what he stands for, I, unless you know better than I do? Well, we're, we're rolling out our education policy proposals today in the, in the Richmond area, and, uh, and we're looking at reforming the SOLs, uh, which have been an important component of accountability in education in Virginia for almost two decades. And we're also going to be focusing on expanding control of parents, particularly of children, in failing schools uh, so that opportunity can be made real for every child in Virginia. We have plenty of good schools. We have lots of good teachers. But we have people trapped. We have kids trapped in areas where they can't succeed, and and the only quick way to uh, to salvage those kids' education is to put it in the control of their parents. But so what what, just, what what does that mean exactly, though? When you say that, put, mean, that means let's say, see, we grade schools in Virginia based on the kids' SOL performance, standards of learning performance, and if you're in a failing school, what that means is uh, you know if you're in a family that can't really afford to put your kid in a, in a private school, for instance, and bail them out of this failing public school, which you're dissatisfied with the pace of improvement in, that you could exercise choices to send your child to another school, maybe even another school district, um, and also uh, to uh, utilize tax credits so that you can get your child into 
uh, a private school of the choice of the parents. So that's what we mean. We mean parents having decision-making control of where their child ends up rather than it being determined by zip code uh, when they have a failing school close by. And we, this is intended both to spur positive change in the schools and it's also, and most importantly, to make sure that no child, no child in Virginia loses out on the opportunity for an education. So, and, and our, our approach here, as you note, is a substantive one. You know, not everybody might agree with what we're proposing, but we're proposing things. You know, every campaign has a positive case and a negative case. A right. positive case for me is I've been serving Virginians, whether it's fighting sexual assault, homelessness, juvenile delinquency, mental people helping people suffering from mental illness for my whole adult lifetime. My opponent hasn't done anything in Virginia, nothing on well, that front. On your- and, and then the negative case is why you shouldn't vote for Terry McAuliffe, and his positive case is gone, to answer your question. The reason he doesn't talk about anything positive is what he wanted to talk about was his job creation record at Franklin Pellets and at Green Tech, and of course Green Tech is under two federal investigations now for his tenure as chairman, and, and the positive case is gone, so all they have left is let's spend our okay. money to destroy Ken Cuccinelli. You have a new ad out. It's called Opportunity. You talk about education in that. But you also say in this ad, our tax code should encourage middle-class families and small businesses, not reward the powerful and well-connected. How is the tax code in the Commonwealth rewarding the powerful and well-connected, and, and what would you do to change it? Uh, well, we have uh, billions of dollars, that was with a B, of tax exemptions and loopholes and carve-outs. Um, and, the, you know, the folks who get that are the ones with good lobbyists, and some of them work. Some of the, And by work, I mean they provide economic benefits to those of us not in the targeted industry. Uh, to me, uh, a successful tax credit is one that provides benefits beyond the folks who just get the immediate credit. It spurs other job creation, et cetera. And we have proposed tax cuts for, as you noted, middle-class families, small businesses, and others that would spur job creation. Our proposal is graded as, sorry, rated as growing over 50,000 new jobs. And in Virginia, we have a balanced budget requirement. So to do that, I've got to get at what amounts to a total of about one-sixth. That's one in six of our tax exemptions and tax credits uh, to be able to pay for the tax cuts that I'm hoping to spur job creation with. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there. Can I, I, we're, I'm going to make us late for traffic, but I just want to point out, uh, Ken Cuccinelli just laid out a comprehensive K-12 through plan for us. He's going to unveil it today in Richmond. I went to Terry McAuliffe's webpage for his K-12 through 12 policy. I kid you not, I can read it for you in three seconds. As governor, I will support our kids in our schools. We're going to take the best ideas from around the country and give teachers and administrators the resources and freedom they need to make Virginia a global leader in education. That's his policy. Yeah, and it would be nice if he'd actually go somewhere and answer questions. Well, wow. and if he would answer questions. Yeah, yeah amazing. All right. Unbelievable. He won't, debate, he won't debate. He won't answer questions. You must feel like you're running against a cartoon character. Some days. I mean, when our goal is to talk to as many Virginians as possible, and his goal seems to be to talk to as few. And as you noted, you know, even when he gets a press call, he, he won't, even when yeah. they call it, they won't take questions. It's extraordinary. Right. Enjoy right. the campaign, Mr. Cuccinelli.